This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Man has 2016 flew by. Everything from hearing great news at Gamma, to going to Origins, to Gen Con, and then all the stuff that came out at Essen, and then BGG Con, and it's here at the end of the year. So, what I'm going to do is take together all the games that i played this year, and I'm going to make up the best games of the year for me. These are the games that I like the most in different categories. Now, I haven't played, obviously, every game that has come out. There's been thousands of them that have come out. Uh, but I have played over 200 of them, and so these are the best of the different categories uh, in my personal preference. So, here we go. Let's get started. Best children's game for me is actually a two-player game for kids, uh, and it's called Brain Freeze. This is a logic and deduction game for kids. I love the colors. I love the theme about all the different ice creams and things, the treats and things like that. And you're trying to find what the other player's secret one is in the location of it. There's different types, different colors, and essentially it's like Battleship meets deduction. It's really a cool idea, uh, and it, it's 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 sort of a it's more an easier version of a game called Telepathy. So it's sort of the kids' version of that. The theme's awesome. The colors are awesome. It really gets the kids thinking about about you know deducing things and ruling out things and logical deduction. But it does it in a way similar to sort of Battleship, which they might already be familiar with. And it's an excellent game. I've even played the kids' version of this, and it's still fun for me. And that's Brain Freeze. Now, staying along the lines of children and family, my favorite family game is Junk Art. This is a sort of a stacking and dexterity game, which I'm usually not a big fan of, but man, this one's so different and fresh, where each game, you're gonna have three different rounds that you'll play, and each of those rounds, you go to a different city, and there's like 11 different cities in the game, so you shuffle them up, and each game you play will be quite different. And they're so interesting, they're simple, yet fun, where sometimes you'll be trying to get the tallest tower. Sometimes you'll all be working on one tower and you're trying to be the one not to mess it up. Sometimes you're going to be drafting cards and passing them. All different ways to play the game, which is really fun. And the pieces are really cool. Uh, they, they, they stack up into just these crazy things that actually tell stories. I mean, we've talked about how some of these things look like totem poles sometimes and things like that. So it's just a fun stacking game that's excellent for families and plays two to six players and one that really surprised me and felt very fresh and that's junk art. My favorite artwork of the year is for a game where the game was actually inspired by the artwork and, that, and it really shows and that's Scythe uh, from Stonemaier Games. The game itself is amazing. It's one of the, It's been one of the most hyped games ever released in board gaming history and for good purpose it's an excellent game but the art in this game just draws you in on the cards and you come to these encounters and you're looking at these farmers and the, some of these snowy scenes and these mechs and it's not really about war and it's just this interesting thing about farming and, and, and staying out of war and different things like that. Sometimes you will have war, but for the most part, it's, 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 you're taking care of things. And it's just, wow, the art in this game drew me so far into it. It's just, oh man, I feel like I'm actually in this world because the artwork in this is just so amazingly gorgeous. Uh, and the pictures that I'm showing you here just speak for themselves. So for me, the best artwork of the year is Scythe. My favorite card game is a game that came out very early this year, I think in February. Now it's a game that you can easily play with people that don't play a lot of games, but you get gamers together and they really enjoy it too because it can be as brain burning as you want. This is called Zany Penguins. And in this game, it's sort of like a reverse drafting area control game and it's the, the most interesting part is you're, you're taking cards and you're gonna pass one to your neighbors and you're getting one back from them and then you're playing a card and you're trying to, to be the one that has the most in certain areas like the jungle and and the, the antarctica and the moon but the thing is is that you're playing these cards to have an area majority at the end of the game but if you do have a majority, you only score the cards in your hand. So it's this tough, tense balance where you're trying to win something, but you don't want to win it by too much because you want to be able to have a lot of cards in your hand to score. And it's such a simple, streamlined game, but there's so many tough decisions. So many times you're going to be going, oh man, I don't want to get rid of any of these. Oh, what should I do? And it's, it's just awesome. 
You know, I took this to Origins and I played it with all the guys from Rolling Dice Taking Names, played it with Rodney Smith, with the Secret Cabal, and all of them were really impressed with it too. They were like, wow, this is really good. I've never played with anyone who didn't think it was awesome. And it's just, it looks like a kid's game, but man, there's a lot more here going on than, than meets the eye. And this is the best card game I've played all year, and that's Zany Penguins. The game that had the best components, for me, this was a big no-brainer. Uh, big game, mechs versus minions from Riot Games. This game, unbelievable. They have the resources to be able to put out a game that would normally be costing $200 if any other publisher did it. And yet, they put this thing out for $75, and the amount of components in this game are mind-blowing. I mean, it's the biggest box that I have in my game room. It comes with uh, so many minions and all these amazingly already pre-painted mechs. Oh man, all these boards, the insert, the way everything fits together, these big chunky metal bits. This thing is unbelievable. This probably has the best components than any, than any game I have in my entire game room. And the way that they did this for $75 is absolutely mind-blowing. So best components of the year, easiest category of the year for me to say, and that's mechs versus minions. Most innovative game of the year uh, for me is a game called The Perfumer. And it's innovative because you're trying to sort of deduce uh, what uh, color uh, thing is a specific scent. So there's like forest, you know, you've got, you've got rose and things like that. And you're literally, it's like a scratch and sniff where you're going, okay, which one is this? Okay, I think I know this one's blue and this one's pink. And you're trying to figure it out and you can mark it on your board, but if you do, other people can try to gleam information from that. Uh, so it's just a really cool and fresh idea uh, that you're actually using sort of scratch and sniffs as part of the main part of the game of trying to figure things out. And I just thought that was really cool and innovative and that's the perfumer. My favorite dice game of the year is called Dice Stars. Now this is a game that I said is as easy to teach as Yahtzee, but yet has so much more depth. I mean, you're rolling dice, you're getting, you get a lot of great decisions to even how many dice you want to roll. Dice that other people leave behind, you get to use, so you're trying to see what other people are going for and what to use. And then you're either taking all the numbers or all the colors, and depending on which ones you take, will it'll, it'll fill out on your grid pad in a different way and this is important because there's stars this game is all about stars and the stars themselves could help you double your points but if you start to go down the path of a star and you don't get it finished then you'll get zero points for that row so there's a really interesting pressure luck mechanism other people might be trying to rush the game because they want to get you stuck out without getting all your stars where you get zero points it's just a really really fascinating interesting game with tons of amazing decisions to make uh, in such an easy mechanical game where you're just picking how many dice to roll and you're taking all colors or all numbers, that's it. But there's a lot going on there. Very thinky, much more thinky than it really looks. And that's Dice Stars. My favorite expansion of the year is Seven Wonders Duel Pantheon. Now this took a game that was already a huge top seller and already one of my favorite two-player games and took it and added some extra things. It added new ways to play. It added more tenseness to the best parts of the game, which was ending it with science or ending it with military. It just gave you new ways and also gave you ways where when you used to flip cards up, it was usually a bad thing for you to do, but now you're actually getting compensated with that and being able to get more powerful cards that will help you go down a specific strategy for doing that. I think it helped it balance it a little bit more. All the new cards that you can use are awesome. The idea of figuring out how much it costs. I can say how much it costs. Little for you or a lot for me or vice versa. Oh man, this expansion took a game that I didn't think needed an expansion and made it even better. And that's why this is my expansion of the year. It's Seven Wonders Duel Pantheon. My favorite two-player game of the year is one that you might not even have heard of this year. It's called Magic Minds. And essentially it's a game called Telepathy that used to come out, but now it's called Magic Minds Telepathy. Essentially this is a two-player only deduction game where you're trying to figure out what is the other person's secret thing. And there's different types and different colors of each. And it's in this big grid. And it's sort of like Battleship meets Clue where you're yelling at a place like C4, and then they're saying either yes or no, meaning does it have something to do with the row, the column, the color, or the item, or not? 
and you're trying to deduce and narrow yourself down to knowing exactly what it is. And it's a brain burner, but it's very simple, very streamlined, it's quick. It's like a 15 minute game, but man, there's so much thought and great deduction here. And that is Magic Minds Telepathy. My favorite reprint of this year uh, is, is for a game called Mr. Jack. Uh, the, the original game, Mr. Jack series, is one of my favorite two-player games series, but the original Mr. Jack was actually my least favorite of the four of that series. It was the first one that ever came out. It laid the groundwork. I think everything had built upon that, and that one sort of got, for me, left in the shuffle because the other ones did it better. However, this was not just a reprint of, hey, let's just make it look new, which they did. They updated the characters so they all look 10 years older because this is the 10th year anniversary. But they changed eight locations on the board, which totally changed it. It used to be unbalanced 60 to 40%. They have completely rebalanced this game and now it's up there with some of my favorites of the series. And so it really brought this game back up, uh, took another look at it, and it took a game that I played the least out of the four, and I feel like I'm playing it for the first time again. It's familiar, but man, the strategies are just different, and it's a lot more, uh, a lot more tense, there's a lot more escaping going on, and it just took a game that I thought was good and made it fantastic, and that's the reprint of Mr. Jack. For me, the party game of the year is a game that I have never in my life ever seen consistent reactions from every person who's playing it and every person who's watching it ever. This is called Happy Salmon. It also has started the secret handshake of gamers. You go up to someone and go, oh, Happy Salmon to you, and you can Happy Salmon them. Oh my gosh, this game is like a cultural phenomenon. I have taken this game to so many different places where people don't play games and everybody just stops what they're doing, watches this thing, instantly wants to play it, laughs their butts off, and then says, where do I buy it? And they just buy it. And I have never seen anybody look at this game and either not have fun watching it or not have fun playing it. This will turn like the most mundane event to something that's ripping the roof off with laughter and fun. It's the best icebreaker I can ever pull out. It literally takes two minutes to play. And then you play it silent and people are giggling. Oh man, this, this game is absolutely special because of what it's done for people. And that is Happy Salmon. My favorite strategy game this year was a game that not a lot of people have been talking about and that's called Covert. Uh, this is a game that's very tactical. It is a worker placement uh, dice game where you're placing dice as your workers and you're doing different things as spies to try to gain points. You're trying to crack codes to get items to help you complete missions. Those missions, you're moving your people along the board, picking up intel from other players, you're getting different items, you're doing all these different things. It is very brain burnery and it's very tactical. Uh, there's not a whole lot of what am I going to do two, three, four, five turns from now? What am I trying to do the end game? It's what am I doing right now on my turn because the board has just changed. A lot of people don't like those types of games. I love those types of games, those sort of puzzly elements. There's ways to block people, but there's also ways uh, to get around that in almost every instance of either using special ability tiles or you know going after something else. So this game really hit all levels of me on my radar, and that is Covert. Now my favorite cooperative game of the year is one that I actually already mentioned on this list uh, and because of the components and that's Mechs vs Minions. Now this typically isn't a style of game that by walking by it I would ever really be that interested in because I'm not into miniatures and dudes on the map and things like that, but it's cooperative, which I love. It's drafting, which I love. It's programming, which I love. And you put all those three things together in a scenario driven based game with amazing components and this game is just awesome. It's really fun to draft the right cards, to have your mech doing certain things, to try to, you know, get whatever mission you are accomplished. It's fun to be able to power up your different things up to level three and be this huge powerful mech doing all these awesome things. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, the programming aspects just really clean, the drafting, everything. It's just so well designed. It's such a fun experience. Uh, and this one absolutely is one of the best co-op games that I have, period. And that's Mechs vs. Minions. 
All right, now game of the year, I'm not gonna mention in this video because uh, later on this week, I'll be doing my top 10 games of the year. And on that, the number one will be my game of the year. So keep your eyes open for that. I hope you guys had a great year. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.